so the next thing we need to talk about is partial fraction decomposition. And this is just a process of essentially reverse adding or subtracting fractions. Or rational expressions, right, is I guess the algebraic term. And for now, we're going to deal with what our book calls a proper algebraic fraction. And this is one in which the degree of the numerator is a fraction in which the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. This is no different than when we used to talk about just proper fractions in maybe like elementary school, right? Where something like two thirds is proper, but five fourths is not because the numerator is greater than the denominator. And the same thing is true here. But for now, all we're gonna deal with with partial fraction decomposition are these proper fractions. We'll deal with improper fractions maybe later on. This is a process that is not as complicated as it sounds. Um, and there are a few simple steps that we can follow to make this work. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on the denominator and we're going to factor the denom uh, denominator. So I know that x squared plus x minus 2 is going to factor into x plus 2 times x minus 1. All right, if we think about adding fractions, I have like 3 fifths plus 2 thirds. Well, I had to get a common denominator of 15 somewhere, right? And I had gotten that by multiplying my denominators together. And that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out here is what would I have multiplied together in order to get my denominator? And that's kind of what this factoring step undoes. So first thing is to factor the denominator. Good, we're done. This gives us the denominators of our decomposition. So I can take these denominators and I can express my fraction, my rational expression, as the sum of two smaller rational expressions whose denominators are x plus 2 and x minus 1. We don't know what our numerators are yet. Whoops. We don't know what our numerators are yet, so we're just going to call them A and B for now. So I've got some kind of structure, right? I know sort of what's about to happen here. The next thing I need to do, that's not the color I wanted to use, to make this maybe a little bit easier to work with, is to actually combine these fractions, which maybe feels like I'm undoing what we're what we just accomplished or what we're trying to do, but I promise it's going to help. So we're going to combine the fractions on the right-hand side, RHS for right-hand side. So we're just going to carry down my left-hand side for consistency. And as per usual, we're going to cross multiply. So my common denominator becomes x plus 2, x minus 1. And then if I use that kind of cross multiplication, I'm going to get a times x minus 1 and b times x plus 2. Our denominators are equal, right? These are equal. And of course, one of the properties we have is that, say, I have like a over c and b over c, then a and, sorry, then a and b are equal to each other, and I can basically ignore the denominator and that's exactly what I'm going to do here. That's just my third step is ignore the denominator. I had a really hard time saying that word for some reason um, but essentially what I'm left with is 2x minus 5 equals a times x plus x minus 1 excuse me plus b I'll write it in in a minute times x plus 2 just like this. This is the piece that we want to focus on. This is the important part here. Our goal, essentially, is to solve for A and B. Normally, how you would do that is to make a system, right? We could make a system. We could pick whatever values for X we want to give us two different systems, uh, two different equations that we could solve simultaneously and get A and B. Yeah, sure, whatever, you could do that. But you can make it much easier. And the way we're gonna make it much easier 
Instead of substituting any value we feel like, I'm going to substitute what we call convenient values. That's not a technical term. That's something I made up. We're going to substitute convenient values into x to eliminate one unknown at a time. We're going to repeat this step as often as we need to. So repeat until whoa, until all unknowns are solved for. All right, so the first one, if I want to solve for A, well, if I want to solve for A, then I need to eliminate B, right? If I want to solve for A, I need to eliminate B. So the way I'm going to eliminate B is going to be to let X equal negative 2, right? That's going to give me 0 times B, which effectively eliminates the B. So if I let x equal 2, then I'm going to negative 2, I'm going to get negative 9 on my left. I'm going to get negative 3a on my right. And that tells me that a equals 3. And then we're going to repeat this process for b. If I want to eliminate a to solve for b, I need to let x equal 1. And that's going to give me 0a, which eliminates a. So if I plug in 1 everywhere, I get negative 2. Did I do that right? No. 2 times 1 is 2. Minus 5 is negative 3 equals 3b. b equals negative 1. So here are my a and b. My final step, as I'm running out of room, is to substitute into my original separated fractions. And all that is is to say take my a and my b and put them back into where they belong up here. So I'm going to get 3 over x plus 2 plus negative 1 over x minus 1. And yeah, if you wanted to, you could write this as 3 over x plus 2 minus 1 over x minus 1. Obviously, these are the same exact thing. But um, five steps that rely a lot on all the factoring that you learned in Algebra 2. A little bit of substitution. Hopefully not as scary as maybe it sounds with the name. There are a couple extra problems for you to practice in your guided notes if you need the help um, and want the extra practice.